Peace, y'all. It's God, you free in the man. You rock it with Heritage Hip Hop. Peace and blessings, everybody. This is Karev from Heritage Hip Hop. New look, new sound, new faces. And the face that you see right here is going to leave you with something. Introduce yourself to the people. Peace, y'all. My name is You Freedom, and I represent North New Jersey, which we call New Kingdom. And you rock it with HeritageHipHop.com. Word. All right, so let's get into it real quick. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Give me some background on who you are. Oh, man. Well, let's see. An MC, of course, you know, an element of hip hop. Teacher, because, you know, through my music. And, you know, in real life period, you know, like, I like giving, like, life lessons, you know, to pretty much anyone who's open to hear it. If you're around me, more than likely, you're going to learn something from me. You know what I'm saying? And. Cancer, July 21st, you know what I'm saying, um, 5% part of the Nation of Gods and Herbs. And um, I just look forward to growing, not not as not only as an MC, but as a person as well. You know what I mean? You're going to see me rise. You're going to see me take a few falls in my life, yet you're going to always see me get up and come back strong, you know what I'm saying? So I respect that. To me, you freedom is a samurai. Cause a samurai wasn't only a warrior who walked with his strength on his exterior. He never hid his power so people knew when he was coming. You feel me? Yeah. So when I listen to your music, I get the I get the I get the feeling of Kingsman warriorship. And I'ma tell you why. Mm. I get it because you're very pronounced in what you say. How important is it for you to be clear spoken as well as well heard? Well, for me, you know, I put an emphasis on, you know, being clear, not only in my speaking, yeah, in my music as well, because nowadays you have, you know, a lot of brothers out here who's what you doing, um, who's doing what you call mumble rap, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And me, I always been the different type dude, even when, you know, I was a child or whatever. Like, I always wanted to stand out, even though, you know, I had my moments where I wanted to be a part of the crowd, yet, you know, I wanted to not only be clear spoken, that way you understand, you know, what I'm saying, but you also understand the message behind what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Because, you know, nowadays, again, you really don't have too much of that, like, raps with messages in them, and I want to be like a voice, or at least one of the voices for that, you know what I'm saying? So, it's very important for me to not only speak clearly, you know what I'm saying, but add a message to it. And, you know, not to mention, you know, as a, as a child, I had what you call a speech problem. And, um, yeah, I gotta say, well, listening to a lot of hip-hop, you know, actually helped me, you know, form sentences and things like that, and how to speak. That's dope. But you put in there, you was a five percenter. Yes. So now we gonna have some fun. Uh oh. <laughs> because as a member of the five percent nation, not only do you have to have the understanding of one twenty, you have to live one twenty, and you have to speak your one twenty as well as show your one twenty in your outward appearance. That's samurai shit. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So when you master your one twenty, number one is. Well, for one. Not only do you have to knowledge it, you also have to understand it as well. And once you knowledge it and understand it, then you gotta live it out throughout the course of your life. And that's wisdom. Nah, uh, wisdom is actually your ways, words, and your actions. And it's not not the outward expression. Yes, that is outward is outward expression. Wisdom is the words that you say, the things that you do. So then it would be wise to say that you freedom uses knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in bar structure. In a sense, yes. Okay, so let's go into knowledge, wisdom, understanding, but let's also go to culture and freedom. Let's talk about the things that make the MC in you pronounced. Now, we said you have a message. What is the outstanding principle that makes you want to tell your message? Well, I would say honesty. That's what I would say, honestly. Because nowadays, you have 
you have what I like to call a lot of illusions out here. They make you think that the things that, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? They make you they make you think that all the things that's going on out here, which is really dysfunctional, you know, cool or whatever. And, you know, being that a lot of these, you know, a lot of these famous figures, like they have a platform, you know what I mean, where everybody's, you know, paying attention to them. And a lot of these kids is actually looking up to them. And a lot of the times, like, that's not the right route to go. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't knock anybody for, you know, your personal choices. Like, you do what you do. Yet, when you have young minds who still developing mentally, you know, you got to be mindful of the type of things that you put out, the type of things that you do, because once you're in front of that spotlight, you're responsible whether you like it or not. Now, you can say, oh, I'm not a role model, or I'm not perfect, this, that, and the third. But newsflash, you are. So, part of your music is the collective conscience of being responsible and literate. Exactly, accountable. Accountability has seemed to fall back in today's hip hop, mainly for the fact that everybody's getting money. And one of the main uh, fun, it's, it's funny, but it's true. One of the lines they used to say in the movies in the 70s and early 80s was, people will come home from jail. Right. And they'll be like, yo, brother, what happened to the revolution? And they'd be like, niggas is getting jobs. <laughs> the revolution fell. Because now opportunity arose. <laughs> Yeah. So with certain opportunity, that fire was gone. The pilot wasn't lit. And with that understanding, all you hear is get high, get money, have sex, get money, get money, get money, get money. And you had the money phone and all this stuff in people's Instagrams. Uh, and yet it seems that responsibility and being cultured has gone out the door. How do we fix that and let people know that money is more a mirage, an illusion, than a reality. Well, from my personal point of view, I mean, don't get me wrong, money is a necessity, yet it's also a tool that should be used. You know what I'm saying? And I'd say, from my also from my point of view, those brothers who have, who has that set ability, or what we like to call a qualified person, get out here. Get out, like, simple and plain, get out here and teach and do what you're supposed to do. Because a lot of us know better. You see what I'm saying? That's the purpose of getting knowledge yourself. Once you know yourself and you know right from wrong, you know better. So you're actually accountable. You're actually accountable for everything that you say and do. And I'm not just pointing the fingers at anybody else. No, 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 no. I'm also talking about me as well because I make mistakes too. Yet, I'm mad enough to actually admit that I made a mistake and I'm going to correct it. You know, it was deep. In the 90s, there was like, I always talk about, I talk about stuff like the prophecies and stuff that came from the four years. And in the 90s, it was prophesied that there would be a great awakening. Right. And in the awakening, um, it said that, you know, the female energy will become more present and people will be more conscious of the inner man or inner woman that's within them. But the funny part is, these lessons have been up since the guys on Earth were formed in the 70s, on in, on in, or in, well, 60s, late 60s, 70s, and actually, what um, lessons that came from biblical times, Quran, even before with Torah, where it was knowledge of self is the preservation of God within you, so you can show your your outward connection to the higher power. Hip hop was grounded on that at one time. Cause you seen the Moors and you seen the people with the fezes and you seen the people rocking the Kufis and those were considered crowns. Why do you think in hip hop today people have taken their crown off? Well, I would chalk that up. Like at the present moment, I would chalk that up to compromise. You see? Mm. A lot of times, again, as I said, a lot of us know right from wrong. Now granted, we may be young and we may be going through, you know, our growing pains and things like that, but certain things, you know what I'm saying, that you know that you shouldn't be doing for a fact that you know could land you in jail or the box or whatever, you know good got, can I curse? Yeah, good. It's free. Good. All right, you know good goddamn well that you're not supposed to be doing these things yet. You partake in it. 
and for what to fit in? Well, yeah, I mean, peer pressure has always been a part of hip hop. Right. Mob Deep even made a song called Peer Pressure. You know what I'm saying? It was an yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Peer pressure has always been. It's been one of the most unspoken powers in American culture. Right. Because peer pressure brings on mob rule, and mob rule also put on systematic government. So pressure, as it can bust pipes or make diamonds, pressure is always the proven ground in which one soul can be lost or proven. Am I right? Right. So you talk about Nork being the new kingdom, and pressure in Nork goes hand in hand with life in Nork. Tell me about some of the pressures that you've encountered and how that helped shape your walk as an MC and as a spiritual man. Well, as I said, even before, you know, I got into this path of knowledge itself, you know, I was just like any other, you know, kid growing up in Nork, you know trying to be down with, you know, the neighborhood kids, even though a lot of the things they were doing, you know, were illegal and things like that. And I'm not gonna hold you, like, I actually wanted to be a part of that at one point. You see what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, gang members, blood scripts running around north and things like that. And, um, at that time, I wanted a part of that because they, like, they had, you know, what I wanted at the time, you know, confidence, um, money, um, respect, which I perceived as power at that time, because I didn't see those things within myself. And a lot of the times, those brothers, you know, even in the midst of them doing, you know, the dirt that they was doing, it was always telling me, like, nah, little bro, like, this ain't you, like, this ain't what you want. And, you know, they would tell me some of the things that they would go through, and I was just like, damn, like, yeah, I really go through that. So, before, matter of fact, even before, you know, I became, you know, you Freedom, my rap name was Lil Rock, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I wanted to be just like my big brother. And what's ironic, you know, my brother didn't even want, didn't even name me that, you know? It was one of our, you know, one of our homies from the block or whatever. One of our homies from the block, he named me that. My brother, he always wanted me to um, have an identity of my own. It's just at the time, you know, I wasn't really trying to hear it because, again, like, all my peers, they had things that I myself wanted for me, not knowing the whole time it was already in me. See what mm. I'm saying? Mm. So yeah, before you know, I became you freedom. You know what I mean? I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to be like the crowd. But then after that didn't work out for me, I just I just said fuck it. You know, I'm just gonna look inside and you know take this path. Mm. 